All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the cross product. This goes with section 2.4 of the OpenStax Calculus 3 textbook. We would define the cross product of two vectors and talk about the geometric applications. So let me go back to the idea of the right-hand rule for this. Um, and we talked about this when we first introduced vectors and three-dimensional coordinate systems that your fingers of your right hand would point in the direction of the x-axis and then curl towards the y-axis and then your thumb would point in the direction of the z-axis. And that's the right hand rule for the right-handed coordinate system we use. Uh, similarly, we use a right hand rule to define the cross product. And so the uh, first vector that's listed in the cross product, in this case, u, uh, you start your fingers of your right hand pointing in the direction of u and then curl them to the direction of v and then your thumb should be pointing in the direction of the cross product vector. Uh, again, you can define the cross product with a left-handed rule and some countries may do that. Uh, now you notice that the uh, vector is gonna be pointed in third dimension, even if u and v uh, are two dimensional vectors. Um, and that you can think of u and v as having a plane that they're both in um, and then the vector u cross v is the normal vector to that plane. All that is true. Now, if we had the components of those vectors, uh, we could find it using determinants, but we'll quick do a quick review of determinants of matrices. So if I have a matrix of two by two matrix of numbers, a1, a2, b1, b2, then the determinant uh, is just the difference of the diagonal, a1 times b2, uh, with the off diagonal, b1 times a2. So multiply the diagonal, multiply the off diagonal, and then subtract. You can see it here with some specific constants, three times one minus five times negative two, and you get a determinant of 13. Uh, if you had a three by three matrix, the determinant is broken down into uh, the two by two determinants, I think the easiest way to think about this is that you take the first row and you say, okay, I'm going to take this number and I'm going to multiply it by this uh, two by two sub matrix. That gets you the first part. And then you move over to this one and you're going to multiply A2 uh, by uh, that two by two matrix. Now notice there is a subtraction in front of that. And some people do this differently so that that matrix is different and then that's a plus instead. Uh, but this is the way our textbook is doing it. And then the last one, you would continue to the last element of that first row. And again, think of kind of crossing off that row and column, leaving you with that two matrix, two by two sub matrix. Uh, and then you would multiply A3 times that. And each of those two by two matrices, you do the determinant uh, according to the way we defined it at the top. So this ends up being a bit of a process and we'll break that down more in the methodology. Um, or I guess we'll break it down right here. So let's say U and V are two three-dimensional vectors and we wanna know their cross product. We create a three by three matrix and the first row is the basis vectors, I, J, K. So these are the unit vectors in the direction of the X, Y, and Z axes. And the second row is the first vector mentioned, u, its components. And then the third row is the second vector mentioned in its components. Uh, then if we break down that in terms of two by two matrices, you'll notice that each one is multiplied by i, j, and k. And so these are the three components of the cross product. So the result is another vector. We remember with the dot product, the result was a scalar. Uh, and so this is a vector cross product. Uh, now, if you want to see it written out completely in terms of these determinants, there's the determinant of the first matrix, and then there's the determinant of the second, and then there's the determinant of the third. And of course, you can write it without i, j, k. You could just use the bracket notation and commas. Now, uh, we've specified that, you know, there's the first vector in the cross product and the second vector in the cross product, and that's because this is not commutative. If you change the order of the cross product multiplication, you get a different result. Um, now it is different only in that it's the same vector pointed in the opposite direction. So switching from u cross v to v cross u, uh, you will get just each component is the opposite number. So one to negative one, three to negative three, negative six to six. Um, and of course this makes sense in terms of what we said with the right hand rule, you'd be 
twisting your right hand the other way and your thumb will be pointing in the opposite direction. So it's anti-commutative in that the switching the order gives you the opposite result. It is distributive over a vector sum or difference. It is distributive uh, with a vector, or sorry, with a scalar multiplication. Uh, if you do the cross product of any vector with zero, the result is the zero vector. Now the zero vector is just a vector that has zero for every component. Um, and, but you see that it's kind of written as a bold zero there. If you take the cross product of any vector with itself, it's zero. And that's interesting. Uh, and then there is a triple scalar product uh, where you do a cross product and then do a dot product. And uh, there is some interesting uh, result here where you can change the order of that as long as the three vectors stay uh, left to right in the same order. You can switch the dot and cross product and get the same result. Uh, now we mentioned that the uh, cross product any vector with itself is zero and here is why because you really need the angle between them uh, to sort of create this parallelogram. The magnitude of the cross product is equal to the area of the parallelogram formed by the two vectors. So if it's just the same vector with itself, the area would be zero, right? Because there would be no parallelogram. Uh, and now you may remember that the area of a parallelogram uh, is defined in terms of the, uh, the measures of the two sides and then the sign of the angle formed by the two sides, uh, or maybe not, that might not have been a formula we have, but we can actually use that to get uh, a cool formula. Remember we had a formula for the cosine of theta in terms of the dot product? Well, this is a formula for the sine of theta in terms of the cross product. So the magnitude of the cross product is the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the sine of theta. Uh, we talked uh, about the triple scalar product where you do a cross product and then a dot product. Um, if you look at the absolute value of that, it's equal to the volume of the parallel pipette, uh, which is this sort of three-dimensional parallelogram uh, formed by the three vectors. Uh, and you can see the derivation of that here in terms of projections. All right, now it's real important to know whether the result of any operation done with these uh, vectors is a vector or a scalar. Um, and because sometimes uh, then you can't do what you want to do next with it. And so in these concept checks, we just check whether the result is a vector, a scalar, or whether it does not exist because you're trying to combine things with an operation that they don't work with. All right, so uh, take a second to look at this one first. Uh, notice the bold font does indicate that things are vectors. Uh, and determine if this is a vector, a scalar, or does not exist. Right. So the correct answer here is scalar, uh, because even though in parentheses you are getting vectors from u cross v and v cross w, that you, at the end, uh, take the dot product. So parentheses are used for order of operations in the same way they are with scalar arithmetic, and that you do what's inside parentheses first. So vector dot vector gives you a scalar. So correct answer is B. How about this one? Uh, so this one does not exist uh, because again, you would use what's inside parentheses first. Uh, and so U dot V that's a scalar, V dot W that's a scalar, and you can't take the cross product of two scalars. Cross product is only defined in terms of vectors. So this is undefined, doesn't make sense. And so C does not exist. Last one. All right, so A, B, C, D, and E are all vectors. And a dot b is a scalar, c dot d is a scalar, and you would divide those. Uh, but this is multiplica multiplying a scalar uh, times a vector e. Uh, and so a scalar times a vector is a vector. Uh, so this is some vector that's in the same direction as e, but is either bigger or smaller or in the opposite direction, depending on a, b, c, d. So the correct answer is a vector. All right, on to the methodology, but of course this presentation by Matthew Watts contains images and text from Calculus 3 OpenStax textbook by Jed Herman and G. Strange, CC by NCSA.